Dakota, Fox News at 9. A migrant boat capsized and rescued, caught on camera. Plus, after dozens of similar cases were thrown out, two North Dakota Access Pipeline protesters have their case taken to the state Supreme Court. Why defense attorneys argue there is no case. But first, new pressures to adopt changes in our state foster care system. This is West Dakota Fox News at 9 with Molly Martinez and meteorologist Henry Blakes. Your first news of the night starts right now on West Dakota Fox News at 9. Good evening, I'm Molly Martinez. 1,600 kids rely on North Dakota's foster care system. About 8% of those children are in group care. But cost of maintaining those programs has federal regulators stepping in. Andrew Horn says now there's a push to drive that number down. The Families First Prevention Act wants to get more kids in foster care back into family settings. North Dakota's Department of Human Services wants to do that for the kids and their bottom line. Let's kick it over now to meteorologist Henry Blakes. Henry, the weather is going our way. Yeah, finally for a change, the weather's looking pretty good. The state Supreme Court heard arguments today in the cases of two Dakota Access Pipeline protesters. Mary Redway and Alexander Simon were among 120 people arrested near a construction site on October 22, 2016. Most of the protesters were charged with disorderly conduct. About 90 of those cases were dropped due to lack of evidence. Redway and Simon were convicted, with prosecutors using photos taken of them at the scene. But the defense contends that the photos don't show them doing anything criminal. So I'm hoping that the court will look at uh, We'll actually look at the trial record and we'll, we'll see that there's no evidence there. There's no there there um, to actually convict Ms. Redway and Mr. Simon. The prosecution declined comment. It may take months before the court issues a written opinion. Speaking of the DAPL cases, a U.S. district judge will hear a dispute between federal prosecutors and a protester whose arm was severely injured in an explosion. Prosecutors say authorities collected shrapnel and clothing from Sophia Walensky when she was in the hospital. Now she wants it back to use as evidence. Police maintain that the explosion in, that injured Walensky was caused by a propane canister demonstrators rigged to explode. She and protesters say it was actually caused by police by a police concussion grenade and she plans to file a lawsuit. The family of Olivia Lone Bear, who's been missing since October, is ramping up their search. The 32-year-old was seen in Newtown last. Since then, the Bureau of Indian Affairs has combed through the Fort Berthold Reservation. Matthew Lone Bear, Olivia's brother, says his family is organizing volunteer search teams to help with the tribal agencies for new searches. A 21-year-old Bismarck mother is charged with child neglect after her three-month-old daughter was admitted to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Police responded to Chai St. Alexis Health after being alerted that the baby had numerous injuries, including multiple skull fractures. The baby was later airlifted to a medical facility in Fargo. Jennifer Mary Lopez is charged with two counts of felony child neglect. Bond is set at $20,000. A Minot man faces four counts of terrorizing after passengers in a car say he pointed a gun at them. It happened on South Broadway this Saturday. The driver told investigators that the man in the passenger seat of another car waved a gun around and later pointed it at her backseat passengers. Police tracked down 24-year-old Kiowa Paulson Hanlon in a restaurant parking lot. They say they had to physically restrain him after he reportedly refused to obey officers. Officers seized a gun from his car. After an eight-month-old child drowned in a bathtub, tonight a West Fargo man is charged with manslaughter and child neglect. 27-year-old Spencer Foner was arraigned in court today. The child died back in March. Foner will be back in court one month from today. Bismarck police got more than they bargained for after stopping a suspicious vehicle last night. Turns out someone in the car was wanted for hitting a Burley County deputy two weeks ago. Officers say they stopped 21-year-old Brandy Eisenzimmer. And in the back seat, they spotted Lonnie Howard. They arrested Howard for three warrants and Eisenzimmer for drug paraphernalia. Mandan officials are getting closer to creating a stormwater master plan. Engineers are identifying four main problems in the area. The Memorial Park Fields, Endeavor Refinery Area, Sunset Drive near Fifth Avenue Northwest, and downtown Mandan on First and Second Streets. 
They're drafting a proposal of how to fix the issues facing these areas. They hope to have it done sometime this summer. In health news, strokes are the fifth leading cause of death in the country. The Center for Disease Control says North Dakota was 28th in the country for stroke deaths in 2014. Every 40 seconds, someone has a stroke, and every four minutes, someone dies of one. It can result in the loss of motor functions, and if a stroke is severe, it can be difficult to bounce back. And if it does, it could take a few months. They usually come in with some type of disability, whether they have weakness, uh, one side of their body might be more affected than the other, and they're not able to take care of themselves or do activities as independently as they were before. A 40-year-old man from McCluskey lost most of his functions. He's been in therapy for six months and is still not back at 100%. The embattled Spa de Athena and its owners are heading to trial. Jill Becker and Brent Voris are accused of fraud. That's after refusing to honor $180,000 worth of gift cards. Reporter Maddie Jelseth was there today for the motion hearing. The Attorney General's office said Spa Day Athena and the defendants aren't entitled to a jury trial under the law. While attorneys for Spa Day Athena owner Jill Becker and Operations Director Brent Voorhees disagrees. I believe that Mr. Voorhees would get a, a, a very fair shake from any district court judge, but that um, I would relish the opportunity to present these facts and the, the nature of the action and how the action was brought to 12 citizens who pay taxes in the state of North Dakota. After Judge Bruce Haskell heard from both sides, he accepted the defendant's demand to have a jury trial. Haskell also acknowledged the state's request for injunction relief, meaning that certain restrictions could be set against Becker or Voorhees if they open a business in the future. I'm going to remove the, um, the allusions I made to the um, injunction issue. In other words, I think the state does have a good argument that injunctive relief is still available due to the or even though the business may be defunct. The trial will be set in the next couple of days. For us to call to Foxes at 9, I'm Mighty Jolseth. On the education front, it's hard to imagine an, an entire K through 8 school with just 14 students. We but did. there are actually seven public schools in North Dakota with fewer than 20 students. The Manning School in Bismarck is one of them. Some teachers all think, well, you only have nine kids, but I have nine students and every curriculum per grade with those nine students. So it's, it's a lot of work. It's very tedious work and a lot of multitasking, but I enjoy it every day. Manning School feeds into Bismarck High School and Principal Stefan says they're just as prepared for high school and college as any other student. Today, Governor Doug Burgum met with some much younger constituents. He spent time in a class with some Fargo fourth graders. Students got to ask him questions and discuss government. They also touched on geography and economics and learned about the governor's day-to-day -day routine. Well, I think it's just great. I mean, curiosity is part of what's going to fuel our success in the future, and it's fun to meet with kids this age that are still so curious and so eager. Teachers say the visit tied into the class curriculum on North Dakota standards. Well, hunger is a big problem here in North Dakota, but food pantries are here to help. They are major ones in the Bisman area, along with seven smaller ones called Little Free Pantries. And we could soon see more of those. Rough Rider Industries at the State Penitentiary is constructing 16 new pantries. MDU Resource Foundation provided a $2,500 grant for materials, and the inmates are donating their labor. I think it's a good idea. We might as well use up some extra material that we got for something good, you know. You can go to our website, your news leader, to find the locations of all the old and new pantries. So far, so good for North Dakota farmers and ranchers, despite a cold and snowy beginning to spring. Spring calving is 66% complete, and death losses remain mostly average to light. The USDA weekly crop report says cattle and calf conditions rated mostly fair to good. Lambing is 82% done. 86% of the state's winter wheat crop is rated fair, and about two-thirds of the state's topsoil moisture supplies and about half of the subsoil moisture supplies are rated as adequate to surplus. The Game and Fish Department is prohibiting open burning on the Oahe Wildlife Management Area south of Bismarck and Mandan. Burn bans for this time of year are not unusual since the heavily wooded recreation area along the Missouri River is prone to wildfires before the spring green up. All open burning, including campfires, is banned. The use of portable grills is allowed, 
but extreme caution is advised. Dramatic video tonight of the moment a vessel carrying 63 migrants capsizes into the Mediterranean Sea. Italian Coast Guard cameras captured the rescue. A total of 1,000 migrants have been rescued over the past few days. This particular boat was coming from Libya. A pair of Florida construction workers are back on terra firma tonight after their scaffolding collapse, leaving them dangling 100 feet in the air. The men were left stranded for some time. Rescue crews had to scale the side of the building to get to the workers. They were gradually moved to a waiting cherry picker and brought down safely. One person is dead after a tanker truck crash in Oklahoma. The crash happened a few hours ago on Interstate 40. State troopers say the driver died after the truck burst into flames after driving off the road into this ditch. A botched armed robbery caught on camera. Take a look at this. The gunman sticks up the clerk at a gas station in Mexico. He points his gun at customers, but as soon as he turns his back here, that man springs into action, wrestling away his gun. A store employee quickly steps in and grabs the gun from him. YouTube is conducting a bit of a purge, scrapping more than 8 million videos due to inappropriate content. The company says it's revealing the numbers to highlight its struggle to remove inappropriate content quickly and enough to satisfy advertisers and regulators. Well, just days after burying his wife, former President George H.W. Bush is in the hospital. The 93-year-old was taken to the Houston Methodist Hospital Sunday with an infection that has spread to his blood. Spokesman Jim McGrath says Mr. Bush is responding to treatments and appears to be recovering. In tech news, Uber is making some changes. The ride-sharing giant will start withholding some of your information from your driver. Uber will no longer allow drivers to see your exact location history. Customer pickup and drop-off logs will no longer show general areas and instead of pinpoint locations. And a company spokesperson says Uber is constantly exploring new ways to protect customer privacy and increase safety. Speaking of transportation, new data from travel booking sites like Hitmonk show the cheapest time to book your summer flights is right now. By booking flights this week, Hitmonk finds travelers can save around 12% snagging airfares for an average cost of $279 depending on the route. All right, Henry, where are we going? Uh, we're finally going to spring and then eventually <laughs> summer because the weather is looking pretty good. Welcome back. One of the teachers at Eric Ramstad Middle School uses hands-on learning to teach her students the importance of Earth Day. Reporter Molly Hurley spoke to some of those students to find out more about what they're doing to keep the Earth clean. Hi. Eric Ramstad's middle school's seventh grade teacher, Sandra Larson, is taking her kids outside to clean up the Earth. And these students weren't too happy with some of the things that they found. I was really hoping that there would be less trash but today I know I found a beer bottle and my two friends found vodka bottles. Mrs. Larson supplies her students with the right equipment to get the job done. We've been wearing gloves and then we have grabbers that'll help us pick up any trash that we don't want to pick up or it's too big. Guys, I found something over here. These seventh graders say that littering isn't something people should be proud of. They're only like hurting the earth. They're not making it better by doing that. They might think it's like funny or cool, but it's not. As for their advice for you? People just need to be a bit more responsible of where they put it, and they just need to respect the earth more. Take the extra 10, 20 steps to the nearest garbage can, throw your trash away, and recycle. That's, that's all you have to do. Making a difference through action in the Magic City. Five new lemur babies are calling the Madison, Wisconsin Zoo home. The littlest ones were born uh, to two first-time rough lemur mothers. And reporters say the animals are doing well. Since lemurs live in a matriarchy, moms are in charge. Rough lemurs are critically endangered in their native Madagascar due to deforestation and human encroachment. Okay, now over to Henry for the best news of the night. Yes, we're getting ready for the weekend. I know we've got a few days to wait, but some nice weather until we get there. A little breezy saying we already have shorts of the weather for me. Yeah, I need a few more degrees, but hey, by the weekend, I think I'll be good. I actually went swimming last weekend in the Missouri River. You, you did. I didn't mean to. You didn't mean uh, to. Uh -huh. My dog jumped in and couldn't get out. Oh, OK. So <laughs> we both went for a little unexpected swim, but maybe nice. I'll plan one this weekend. Yeah, you should. We'll see you tomorrow.